Hi folks, we are going to do the coin series of tutorials. These are a fairly comprehensive set of tutorials that will lead you through a lot of possibilities in terms of interaction with Unreal. I'm starting with the third person controller, sorry, third person template. Uh, these tutorials can be done on the first person, the third person, or on the top down template. They all work just fine. So you can feel free to work in the level that makes the most sense for the game that you're working on. We're going to start off by creating a blueprint. I'm going to right click in the content browser and select blueprint class. And I'm going to select actor. Uh, actor is sort of the, the simplest of all the blueprints. It's basically an, an object that can be in the world or can be spawned in the world. And when I create an actor, it is an empty actor. I'm going to say BEP coin. And then I'm going to double click it to go inside and start editing the coin blueprint. So in the past, I've sometimes shown you how you can create an object and then turn it into a blueprint. But here today, we're going to do the opposite. We're creating the blueprint first. And then we're going to, under components, we're going to add a static mesh, which is right here. Or if you need to search for it, static mesh. But it's right there, so I'm just going to select static mesh. I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to call it disk, because I'm going to take a cylinder and turn it into a geometry that looks like a disk for a coin. So I'm going to go over here to, with disk selected, go over here to the right to static mesh under details and I am going to select the cylinder shape. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees in the Y and I am going to change the scale to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.05. So I'm scaling the whole thing down by half and then I'm squishing the Z axes by an additional 10. Once I have that that is all the geometry that I need. I'm now going to add a collider or a trigger to allow me to have a, a larger area of contact so that I can pick this up. So to do that, I'm suggesting that we go to the default scene root, that you don't select disk, but default scene root and add a sphere collision. Now what that's gonna do is it gonna, it's gonna make these uh, brother and sister under the parent of the default scene root. If I kept disk selected when I created the sphere, the sphere would be the child of the disk and would inherit the rotation and all of these details about scale. Now, when I'm choosing the sphere, I can make changes here and they're gonna show up without that scaled difference. So. I've noticed that this is not quite centered on the coin. If I move over here a little bit and I want it centered, so I'm going to do negative 2.5 and that looks just about centered. The other thing is I can change the radius of the sphere and just about 27 is a tiny bit bigger than the disc and that works pretty well for me. Once you have your sphere and your disc, inside of your coin, you are ready to go over to the event graph. Okay, now over in the event graph, we are going to make some additional changes in here, which have to do with event actor begin overlap. So we're going to have it recognize when I am colliding with it, and I'm gonna have it tell us by print string, just output a message letting us know that you are collided with the subject. Compile, press play. Oh, and I also have to put it into the scene. So let's go ahead and put it somewhere in the scene, maybe a little bit in front of myself. So I can easily pick it up. There, I'm running into it and it's saying collided. Fantastic. So I know that that is working. And what I then am going to do is I am going to set the actor to be invisible. So set actor, wait a minute. 
that is not the command that I was using before. I was using set visibility. Sorry. And theoretically, I think I could say default scene root, which would turn the entire thing invisible. Let's try that really quickly. But the main thing is I need the disk to go invisible. So compile, save. Let's check that. So it's firing, but it's not turning the disk invisible. So we could then say propagate to children. And everything will turn invisible inside that object. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it would be to take this disk and we could have had the disk be the thing that was being made invisible. But I like to turn off the entire object, even though there isn't anything visible. I'm going to leave it like this. The next item then is we, it's invisible, but I can still collide with it. It can still stop me from moving and I can still trigger it. So I want to set actor enable collision. And I'm going to set that to false. And we're going to set that to self, which should mean this entire object, but let's test it. The default is self, and there we go. It's working. Sometimes it prefers the actual target being called out as a get a reference to self. So it's always worth checking and making sure that this target self is actually going to work. Okay. So we now have our coin, and it is allowing us to pick it up. And what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to create an animation. Uh, and so you know how to do this already from doing the timeline for the door. I'm going to do this in a simpler method. So I am going to get actor rotation. And I'm getting my own rotation. And then I am going to set actor rotation. And I'm then going to set the rotation. Just trying to clean that up a little bit. Now to do this, you're using a rotator and a rotator. But mathematically, rotators are really confusing to me. So what I often like to do with my rotator is just as soon as I make it, I break it. So it breaks it into its, oh, sorry, not into axes. Break rotator. There, it's going to break it into an X, Y, and Z, or a roll, pitch, yaw. And then I can drag this off and say make rotator. And I can plug that right in here to the new rotation. Let's go ahead and slide this over. And then what we want to do is we're going to drag this off and we're going to add. I'm going to do this math command. So if I'd say add, it's going to be under operators and function add. So it should look something like this. And I'm just going to hard code a one into this. And I'm going to connect it from the Y to the Y. And then I'm just going to connect the Z's. I'm going to hit compile. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And it's rotating in the wrong axes. It, the Y was the wrong axes, but I was just doing it to see if it worked. And now I'm going to try and swap it out for the Z. And then I'm going to connect the Y to the Y. So X is unchanged, Y is unchanged. But every millisecond that the engine ticks, it's going to add one to the rotation for the Z. Let's try that again. There, that's the spinning I was looking for. Maybe it's spinning too slow, so I might want to up this to two, compile it again, and press play. Now it's spinning twice as fast, or maybe it's spinning too fast, and I want to slow it down, and I want to do 0.5. There we go. I happen to think that it looks pretty good at about one, so I'm putting it back to one, compiling it, and saving it. Okay. So... I now have a rotating coin that is moving in my scene and it's drawing my attention. 
Sometimes you might run into an instance where it's not being animated and you're getting an error about the movability. And so you might need to come in here and make sure that the default scene root is set to movable uh, or perhaps that the disk needs to be set to movable. It really sort of depends on, on how you've done your callouts on this. Uh, we're setting self, which in my understanding is the entire thing. So the default scene root should be set to movable. Uh, mine has been movable by default and I haven't run into any issues, but I know back in Unreal 4, I used to run into that issue and students used to run into that issue. So I wanted to explain it. Okay, so that is the first tutorial in the coin series. We're gonna stop here and I'll pick it back up with the next.